Okay. Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily on CCTV. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for spending your Wednesday morning with us. We're just going to delve into the news review, mm -hmm. starting with the Daily Graphic. Well, the Daily Graphic says here that uh, no agreement on a digital TV platform with Star Times, and it's coming from uh, the Deputy Communications Minister, George Ander. And also, Aubrey Pong commends government for free SHS. Bagri Dam Spillage, uh, Ghana, Burkina Faso discuss solutions. Uh, the full story is on page three this morning of the Daily Graphic. You can see a picture here of the President and another Dan Kufado as he decorates President Kabori of uh, Burkina Faso with a companion of the Order of the Star of Ghana <laughs> at the Jubilee House today. <laughs> oh, sorry, yesterday. Hmm. Now, okay. straight to the Ghanaian yes, Times. Yes, let's take a look at the Ghanaian Times. It says here, four price hikes. Government must intervene. That's coming from the Ghana Private Road Transport Union, GPRTU. And that story is on page 28. 2018 Ghana Garden Flower Show opens on Thursday. Um, I'll bring Paul Watse Koju to outlines development projects um, for... In Gleshi Alata. That's mm, page, English that, Alata. English Alata. That story is on page 17. And Ghana, Burkina Faso meets over Bagri Dam spillage. That story is also on page 16 of the Ghanaian Times. Okay, now straight to the ABC News. Let's embrace the one district, one factory. Well, that's an editorial in the ABC News this morning. Also, um, uh, Ghana honors Burkina Bay leader. And finally, more trouble for Iwa Dako as oil companies deny 40 million Ghana CD payments. So, uh, Honorable uh, Edward Barr gave some, or sought to give some explanations on why the oil companies are unaware of this 40 million Ghana CD. So, we'll take a look at that story shortly. Okay, now on to the new crusading guide. Uh, Ghana, Burkina Faso to improve trade relations. That story is on page 10. GNPC Blues, head of energy, oil and gas on tenterhooks over wrong advice. That story is on pages 3 and 10. Rename a house in parliament after Bagbin. That's coming from the Western <laughs> Chiefs. And James Dal Manche endorses double track free SHS system. Okay, now going straight to the Gold Street business this morning. It says here that high dollar rates could cause more job losses. GEA warns that's the Ghana Employers Association. And also, Ghana's B rating likely to increase borrowing. <laughs> this is coming from Professor Agachi. National Policy Summit Government to provide status report on flagship programs. And we are hearing this from the information minister designate Honorable Kujo Ponkroma. Okay, let's take a look at the independent. Times are hard. Hmm. Stop comparisons and fix it. That's coming from Professor Jampo, and he's telling the government. And that story is on page two. Outrage over latest hike in fuel prices. That story is also on page two of the independent. Hmm. Now, straight to the Chronicle. The Chronicle says. Who killed Kudalos bodyguard? IGP opens DNA probe into mysterious disappearance. Wow. Now, Ghana Baptist Convention builds hospital for Invelenu. And um, uh, also another story here, UEW ready for free SHS students. And finally, Conte Katanga alumni battle KN UST VC. Now, uh, on this particular story, if I know where I stand, I think no. the, the, the tradition <laughs> should remain. You should, you should build more halls or hostels instead of uh, trying to make it mixed, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't agree with you. You know where I stand on that. Yeah, so I know I where you stand on that. I think we need to in innovate tradition. Mm. Uh, the Daily Statesman, Ghana to help Burkina Faso in terrorism fights. Hmm. That story is on page three. <laughs> NPP names new officers, and there, there are pictures here of the Deputy General Secretary and the Deputy General, well, a bunch of people who have all, um, as you can see here, um, be appointed, been appointed by the NPP, and John Mahama in more trouble over bust 100 million Ghana CD chop chop. 
Now, um, uh, let's take a look at the Finder. The Finder newspaper this morning says, Economy in right hands. Dr. Baumia reflects on S&P credit upgrade. Finance minister says investors are upbeat. And also seven pupils perish in fatal accident at uh, Dompim. Ghana, Burkina pledge to strengthen trade ties. The full story is on page four this morning. And also another story here. James Sound Chief outlines multiple development projects. And finally, um, Kokoko Charities donate two incubators to Tema General Hospital. Well, well done. Yeah, that's an amazing work. That, that okay. So we do have some online stories which uh, we shall be looking at shortly. Let's see. One of the stories here says, um, Star Times won't manage DTT platform and um, Giba misinformed. Yes, this and coming that's from, from Anda. Yes. And a national cathedral, much more than a church. That's coming from David Ajayi. Hmm. I heard that his name is pronounced a J today, hmm. not a J. Hmm. Men's gold extends suspension of gold vault operations. Um, nothing wrong with 40 million Ghana City boss cash transferred under Mahama. That's coming from Bawa. And Amidu turns down request to probe Mahama Deborah over suspicious 40 million Ghana City boss cash. We're hmm. going to look into that story later on. interesting anyway so we have indeed been joining the studio alexander aban he is the member of parliament for gomwa west good morning welcome to breakfast daily good morning sir yes how are you i'm fine good that's all we're doing good. good we're doing good we've also good. been joined by godfred akoto and godfred akoto is um uh, head of news at, uh, head of current, head of current affairs. affairs. <laughs> <laughs> you always argue that news is yes. current affairs. So head of current affairs here at uh, City TV and City FM. Good yes. morning. Welcome to Breakfast Daily. Good morning, Ike. Good, good morning, Tifa. And also I'm host of well. Face to Face. Yes. Is his name Ajayi or Ajay or how is it pronounced? His name is David Frank Ajay. Ajay. Mm. What tribe is that? Because the Ajay I'm Chibi. used to is mm. the E. He's originally from Chibi. Yeah. Ah. Anyway, wow. So our first story uh, is the four price hikes. And remember that you can join us uh, if you're watching us from home, from your offices, from your phones or from your computers. You can still join us. Put the hashtag Breakfast Daily on all social media platforms and a WhatsApp line 0550-585-832. So uh, starting off with our first story. Yes, so I'm reading from page 28 of the Ghanaian Times. Four price hikes. Government must intervene. That's coming from the Ghana Private Road Transport Union. They've called on the government to do all it can to halt further increase in fuel prices. Yeah. According to the chairman of the union, Kwame Kuma, the increase would have devastating effects on the business of its members with rippling effects on the economy. So we all know that um, as of Monday, the, the four prices had uh, exceeded to five Ghana cities per liter. And now GPRTU is, is pleading with the government to do something about it before the general public has to pay the price. Hmm. Oh, no. oh, okay, you want my comments first? Hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, greetings to our viewers. And uh, special greetings to the people of Goma West. Uh, in doing this, uh, let me commend the DCE, uh, my conscience executives, and uh, the two paramount chiefs and their uh, sub chiefs mm. for a wonderful program uh, over the past weekend. You know, the president was the president there, was there yeah. to inaugurate the uh, Casa de Ropa. Uh, company. It's part of uh, the one you want it? Yes. Uh, fully sponsored or financed by Exim Bank. And uh, they are using raw potatoes, mm -hmm. like a sweet potatoes to produce chips, bread, everything. The, the factory nice. We're, we're, we're there. And thankfully it's in my constituency. <laughs> uh, it was nice. I tasted everything. Mm. Uh, from the bread to the chips to the flakes and all those kind of things. Nice. So it's fully functional now as part of the 1D1F? Not fully. Okay. Because uh, uh, they can much, much better than what they're doing. Now, by December, they would finish with the big factory itself. That's what now they are producing. Mm. Uh, I'm sure 
uh, the production line now, maybe for the local market. But when uh, they are done in December and they go into large scale production, uh, I'm sure uh, we'll see something good. In fact, I, 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 I was very happy. Okay. Very, very happy. Now, on the floor. So they all did well. Now, back to this issue. You see, there are competing imperatives here, right? Mm. The competing imperatives here would be now, should we put money in there to cushion the harsh effects of the increases and create debts there, or we should let the market forces take their own natural course so that government does not incur debt. I believe that uh, over the years, it has become a ritual where government intervenes any time that there is this uh, increment. And in doing that, it creates its own debt, right, because of the subsidies that it comes out with. And later, later, you realize that there will be some levy somewhere on some petroleum products or something like that, right, uh, to deal with that. For a long time, we kept hearing the tall debt, the tall debt, the tall debt. You remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that yeah. led to all that. Okay. And so if, uh, for instance, Tor is going to refine mm -hmm. petroleum products and to bring it out, and they are not going to even bring it out at break-even price, it means that they will be incurring debt. And because we own it, that debt will still be paid some way, somehow, by Ghanaians. The only thing is that it would not be an upfront payment on the uh, 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 petroleum price as has been given, okay, which may lead to uh, a, a, a spike in uh, cost, of fuel. cost of fuel and then transportation and all that. Mm. That becomes so visible. But whatever way we look at it, we will pay for it. You understand? Mm. Now, uh, we should not play the ostrich, we should not uh, play politics with these things. And you know why sometimes it becomes difficult and government is pushed to bring these kind of interventions. It's because over the years we have all played politics with it. All of us. Okay. One person will come with a gallon. At this time, how much was a petrol? It was this. Now, how much is it? It is this. Right? Then we play on the emotions of Ghanaians without uh, bringing in all the other variables, including the stability or otherwise of our own local currency against the foreign currency that we use in importing these things, right? We seem to simplify everything to attract the sympathies of the voters. And this one, NDC, MPP, or other parties, are ah, corporates. Otherwise, at this time, I don't see why that call would even have come from GPR to you, right? If we are allowing natural forces or market forces to take sway, all that, or to hold sway, all that uh, would have done was that looking at the quantum of increase and looking at their own operations and all that, including cost of spare parts, blah, 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 blah. Is it economically sense to maybe do a marginal increment or but, something like that? But, 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 then but you have been having mm. some kind of discussions with uh, government on all that. Because sometimes, uh, with a little economics that we did, mm -hmm. okay, if there is a marginal increment on maybe petroleum products, yeah. mm -hmm. and probably the uh, transport people also increase it even by the same margin, uh, I cannot do the mathematics now, but they even gain more. The transport people will yes. gain more. So it may not be this by the same uh, 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 percentage, right? But they may have... I think you wanted to ask me a yes, question. The, the, the question. Yes, the IES, for instance, is saying that, you know, some of the, 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 the increments will not be as high if certain, you know, uh, components in the price build-up were removed. For instance, the special tax and the, the stabilization levy, amongst others. The ESLA, for instance, you know, many people are saying it's not necessary as a stand right now. Um, I remember very well, uh, enthusiastic, uh, was trying to fight on some, some things for the country. I remember 
being the lawyer for Honorable Kuku Kwating. Mm -hmm. I remember very well where we went to court to deal with the petroleum price components, right? For In any case, w what we did was not so much about the uh, components in there. There had been something that had been smuggled in, in there. It was not backed by any law. And that's what we went to court to uh, have it expunged. Even though we succeeded, uh, they didn't return the money anyway. Uh, <laughs> in those days. Uh, but they finally found a way of going to uh, put that one. Legislated. Yes. Mm. So the case died at the Court of Appeal. Because by the time we went to, uh, uh, they went to Court of Appeal, uh, they had corrected these things, I mean, uh, through Parliament. So it's the people, the, the people's representatives who are in Parliament, mm -hmm. if uh, we think that certain Which you are part of. Yes, I am mm -hmm. one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if it comes that certain components of the uh, price build-up uh, are not necessary and they should be removed, so be it. But I don't express any uh, individual opinion on that. Because this, this is a matter that must come before us and we will discuss it. Okay. After all, whatever price build-up that's in there, it's with the approval of the representatives of the people. Okay. Right. Okay. Very well. Now, yeah. other people have also said, um, and I'm, I'm quoting Senor Hosi mm. here, that perhaps we should look at our transportation system. If we had a public transport system, or maybe not everyone would want to, the demand on the fuel would, would even be better, right? If we thought long term and say this, this is a sustainable model. Thank you. Senor Hosi is my friend. We were in uh, Legon together. When he was uh, her president in <laughs> Legon House, her president in Congo. Congratulations. We are, we are very good friends. <laughs> okay. This position, I wholly endorse it. Mm. You see, uh, let me just give you uh, some little uh, experience that I've had over, over the past three yeah, weeks. Yeah, very briefly. So yes, um, over the past three weeks, I was I was in uh, UK, UK and then Germany. And you took the trains. I took the train uh, from. Berlin to Bonn, <laughs> a journey of like from Accra to Tamale. How did you feel? Within, so nice. Mm. Within a space of uh, four hours, we had uh, made that journey, mm -hmm. right? And you could see the number of people on the trains, meaning that all those people have just left their cars, mm -hmm. right? And even those ones were running on uh, electricity. So I think our transport system. Uh, must be must be overhauled because look if we had serious public transportation system many people would not need their cars why don't we have it it's because of uh, uh, the way from colonial days up to this time we have not thought outside the box mm. because when you go to the tunnels uh, in those countries then you ask yourself how did they do it mm -hmm. right there's a huge transportation system uh, beneath the, 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 the cities, mm -hmm. right? So you just get uh, onto the tube, one end of town, the next moment you are on the other end of town. No sweat. Uh, we should learn from them. Okay. Maybe I should give that to you. Go ahead. <laughs> on well, the whole full price and GPR to use comments. Well, it's, it's, it's the state of where we are, okay? If you look at the debate that is ongoing about fuel pricing and whatnot, everybody says it's the currency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you listen to the government and look at the numbers, honestly, the numbers are right. Mm -hmm. um, inflation is at 9.9%. Depreciation is slower than it has ever been mm -hmm. in almost a decade. All those numbers are right. But then in the opposite direction, you have... Uh, a barrel of fuel being sold was seventy-seven dollars now, and we are buying fuel at five point one two zero this morning, uh, when we checked, compared to a time when the, a barrel of oil was selling for ninety something dollars, and we're buying fuel for four CDs or less. So, everybody looks at it and it comes down to the conclusion: the problems with our currency, the weakening of the city against the dollar, is at the heart of this. And to go back to what Honorable said, do you allow this to play out? Or do you go and take money and halt the slide so that the prices will drop? You do that, there's a ripple effect because mm. you're going to owe somebody. You're going to take it from somewhere to put somewhere. So it simply depends on the strategy of the government at this point. What do we do? Do we allow this to play out and hope that by the 
end of the year, we would have reached our natural order of things and things would have stabilized? Or do we go into panic mode? Go and take money from somewhere, uh, perhaps the syndicated cocoa loan that is coming, or go and borrow some money from somewhere, or ask the Bank of Ghana to give us a couple of million dollars and put it into the system to strengthen the dollar, which might be artificial and will be short term. Mm -hmm. Okay. What perhaps needs to happen, and it's unfortunate, again, the politicians have done it to us. They've turned this into a, a game of politics, thing, yeah. which it shouldn't be. Unfortunately, fewer politics is at the heart of winning elections in this country. And he was right when he said uh, there was a point when somebody lifted a gallon hmm. and said, hey, how much did you buy this for? It's going to happen. It's not going to change. And it's happening. If you go on social media at the moment, everything Dr. Baumia said about fuel way back from 2015 it's been reshared. It's been said before. Facebook has been reshared. On radio, mm. it's been recoded. Newspapers, it's been reprinted. It is the nature of our politics. And so it becomes a matter of, you said this, this is the situation. Instead of actually looking at what the true issues are and what the true repercussions are, you can't blame Ghanaians. They simply want immediate solutions. But then how do you also explain to Ghanaians that if I halt this for you, don't blame me for what happens in three to four months. I've heard the point uh, from uh, IES and from other CSOs who are saying that, look, there are certain components mm. of the tax buildup that can be removed. And yesterday mm. we worked out the numbers. If we take out some of them, we are going to hit like around 4.6. Mm. Okay. But again, it has to go to parliament. This is not something that can be done mm. simply because fuel prices have risen. So, hey, let's just remove this so one. So, which, which ones did you remove to reach that figure of 4.6? We took out the uh, Esla, I think. Yeah. Yes. And maybe the special tax. And then the special tax mm. to hit 4.6. And there are others that could be removed. Mm. But then you have to justify and legislate how you are going to do, how you came to the, the decision to remove these things. And, you know, no government easily removes taxes. Mm. Mm -hmm. They want more money yeah. to incorporate into their projects. So, it is the state of where we are. Do we say, okay, the fundamentals are being built right. Let's wait until the fundamentals are solid enough so that it pulls the dollar back down and then everybody is comfortable? Or do we follow the panic mode because it's two years to an election, people are upset, the petrol politics has started and say, look, let's pump $200 million into mm -hmm. the economy again, stabilize the dollar, the fuel prices will drop, GPRT will stop complaining. Because we do know these are huge, huge constituencies. GPRT is big. Protoa is big. Mm. And even on that front, it's a bit broken at the moment. GPRT is being patient. Protoa is not being so patient mm -hmm. at the moment. Okay, so, so many factions in there with varied interests. And you have a government that is concerned about winning an election. So that determines what it will do. But from where I sit at the moment, it looks like the government is being brave about this and is determined to see this particular month out and see where the prices will go. Because we've seen, uh, for instance, Guel is not increasing prices. Mm. But even that might come at a cost. Of course. Even that might come at a cost. Okay, because naturally you say allow Guel to also increase prices. But Guel holding prices at where they are means that government is losing money losing somewhere. Money, yeah. You understand? So there are a whole myriad of factors that play. But unfortunately, due to the infancy of our democracy and also the infancy of our understanding of some of these things, I listened to the MPA, IES, and uh, other bodies on Bernard's show, uh, point of view, try to break down petrol prices. It was so confusing. And this is me. And I'm just asking myself, so how do you even break this down for the average, for the average Ghanaian? Okay, to understand how we get to five cities. Hmm. He will not understand. By the time you are done going through three or four of the price builders, you tell you, basa, 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 tipetro, no, so me, and no, and yepe. But how do you get to that point? Hmm. That is what we need to figure out. But for now, it looks like the government is determined to see this through. Hmm. Let's hope and watch, let's watch uh, and see how it pans out. Fred, there's one thing that we always, what's causing the, 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 the currency issue? Right? We, we, we always talk about we need to manufacture, we need to produce, yeah. we need to actually stop moving money outside the country, changing yeah. dollars to import things in. We know what the problems are. I'm, I'm sure, Honorable, you've known it since you, you were a child and now you're a leader. At what point do we say let's now build long-term solutions so that the next generation won't also sit here and say oh, they've been doing this since colonial days, they did it in the, in the, in the early 
2000s and we're doing it now and it's 2080. What? You know, at what point do we think long term and say, let's put our immediate interest aside and, and let's let's work on some long term goals that we can all be proud of 30 years from now. I mean, Honorable said he was in the UK. He loved it. It'll be nice for people to come here and say, "Ooh, I was in an underground train and, and I bought everything locally made and I enjoyed it. You know, I didn't buy something I could get in UK or China. I bought something that's authentically made in Ghana and it's helping the economy develop. Well, yeah. it's policy and also. A certain, you know, to get to that level, you need a certain level of protectionism. Mm -hmm. Ghana is the democracy that enjoys its democracy. Mm -hmm. If we say today that we have banned all kinds of Thai rice, Chinese rice, Vietnam rice today, if him and his friends go to parliament and say that, the kind of chaos that will be engineered, because Ghanaians will simply tell you, I don't want to eat Avayme rice. Mm -hmm. It is as simple as that. These are things that perhaps develop over years. Mm -hmm. It's taste, okay? It's lifestyle. And then there is the policy issue as well, which is the most important part. No country has developed without protecting itself. Mm -hmm. The Nigerians are as protectionist as you can find anywhere. They are very inward looking when it comes to mm -hmm. protecting their industry. But then they have the size and the economy In to the match market, it. Yeah. Okay, we don't. So it's again pros and cons, pros and cons. We want to grow our industrial sector we have to close up but then here is a situation where in order to develop it you need money in order to get that money you also have other countries with interest telling you typical example star times like yesterday mm. we are trying to build gtt but here is a deal that says you need 95 million dollars to do other things mm -hmm. from exim bank exim bank says oh i can give you the 95 million dollars no problem however <laughs> in order to get the 95 million dollars to build your road oh, to yeah. build the factories we're that actually looking at that topic that later you need Very to open sure. up yes. the start times uh, but, but oh, that is what it is no we, we we will go for a quick break right now uh before that a message here from junior tiero of uh Akro Kerry says uh, the government should kindly do something about the increment of the floor i am asking where is Dr. Baumia now. <laughs> Another message from Michael Amening says, uh, though times are hard with uh, the recent, though times are hard with the recent fuel hikes, uh, that's making life unbearable for the ordinary Ghanaian currently. And it's as a result of the reckless economic mismanagement by the Eswal Mahama led government. Well, there's actually a different government in power right now. The upgrade of Ghana's economic outlook shows that the right economic policies initiated by the government of President Nanade Dankwe Kufado are yielding positive results. And for that matter, Ghanaians should exercise patience because very soon this economic recovery will improve their lifestyles. Anyway, uh, send more of your messages with the hashtag Breakfast Daily on all social media platforms and the WhatsApp line. 0550-585-832. News review continues. We'll be right back. Good evening, this is The Point of View. We're live on City TV. Tune in to The Point of View. Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. as Bernard Avlet takes the news further. He will bring the right guests, ask them the relevant questions, and get you the real insights you need on the big stories for the day. We, um, we need taxes to run the economy. Um, how do you do it sensibly and have the least pernicious effect in terms of cascading through the economy? And I think that is the thinking that is required. It's not a denial that we need taxes, you know. And, and I think that that is the difference uh, in the two administrations. The Point of View with Bernard Affleck, Monday and Wednesday nights, only on CTTV. Welcome back. 
This is Breakfast Daily on CCTV. We're discussing the uh, GPRTU's uh, request for government to intervene in the four price hikes. And we'll move on to the next topic. But briefly, Honorable, your, your concluding statement on, on, on this topic. Thank you very much. I think we have uh, Exhausted. dealt w with it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if we stopped playing uh, politics, I mean, this field politics, mm -hmm. I'm sure we would not get to a point where uh, the GPIT will have to now ask the government to intervene or the things would have flowed naturally. So you, let's see how it goes uh, between the GPIT and government. I'm sure they will have some discussions mm. and then uh, we'll take that from there. Thank yeah, you. Fantastic. Now our next story has to do with um, the, 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 the chief of the chief of staff sundry's account which apparently received some 40 million in excess of 40 million ghana cities within the during the period uh 2015 to january 3rd that was the first um or the last time amount of money was sent into that particular account i'm reading from citynewsroom.com there are two stories connected to that particular one the first one says nothing wrong with 40 million bust cash transferred under Mahama and uh, Honorable Member of Parliament for Bongo constituency says this issue is just a distraction. So National Democratic Congress Member of Parliament for Bongo, Eric Bauer has defended the transfer of some 40 million from the bulk oil storage and transportation company to the presidency between August 2015 and early January 2017. So as far as he's concerned, it's just a distraction and also connected to that. A special prosecutor, Martin Amido, has come out to say that more or less, I'm, I'm not going to investigate this particular report because um, it's course, already being at? investigated by Yoko. So it being a distraction and also Martin Amido's comments in respect of this 40 uh, million Ghana CDs that was transferred to the account. Thank you very much. Um, for me, corruption anywhere or unjust enrichment of any person uh, indirectly means the impoverishment of, of other, others, right? I believe that uh, year in, year out, mm. uh, governments present their budgets for approval by parliament. And I'm sure in that exercise, mm. uh, various appropriations are made to various uh, organizations, right? And I think that BOSS uh, is there as a strategic uh, reserve, if I put it that way, mm. right, uh, in the oil sector. Uh, but as to why they had to transfer money mm. well, from their account mm -hmm. to the chief of staff's account. Yeah. According uh, to, on that reason, according to Edward Barr, he says that there was a problem uh, somewhere early 2015. There was a problem with them. Uh, the military, the military were unable to uh, pay for fuel being supplied to them by BOST. Initially, BOST was supplying fuel to the military and also for fueling the, the presidential jet. So according to Edward Bauer, when they were unable to pay, government decided to step in and then to let um, the security services, sorry. So they decided to step in and then an, an arrangement was made where... And to me, I think this was quite surreptitiously done, where five pesos on every liter of fuel, an account was created, that's the, the chief of staff, Sandri's account, where five pesos on a liter of gold you buy was fuel. sent to, yes, on, of fuel you buy from gold, was sent straight into this account during this period. And according to Edward Bar, this was what was used to pay the debt that was already owed and also to finance their fuel to the security services and also for the presidential jet and other expenses or other operational expenses is, is how they put it. So that's his justification. And according to him, you know what, this is already, uh, it's not a private person's account. It's a public account that is subject to the Auditor General's perusal. So that's his justification. And he feels it's a distraction from the salient issue. As this is already being investigated by Yoko, and so far Yoko has not come out to impugn guilt or anything on, on anyone. So, on no, but the point is that, regardless of the fact that it's a public account, I believe that there must be some kind of transparency. At whose fiat did we have the order that uh, so the five, five pesos. pesos should be put in that account? If that was the case, how was that going to impact on uh, the profits or the accounting of Goyle? 
right? Because this was girls' money. Mm -hmm. I mean, to all intents and purposes, this was girls' money. The, the five persons were not taken from. That, that, that's where I also have a problem. The five persons was not taken from girl. There was an arrangement between Bust and girl. Now five persons will be placed on what you already. So every time you go and buy fuel from girl, there's an there. extra five percent. Which is put on it five to yeah. Yeah, but, an extra five pesos. And this came from Edward Bauer? That's what Edward Bauer says. But that's illegal. Mm. That's imposition of tax, mm. which cannot be done by the presidency. Mm. I think he's, even if that's the justification, mm. he's actually exposing himself. Mm. He's treading on a very torturous, uh, perilous journey. Mm. Okay? Because by our constitutional architecture, nobody can impose tax. Mm. Except, Except Parliament, Parliament. Mm -hmm. right? And so, if it was surreptitiously done, where if I innocently go and buy fuel, mm. there was some five pesos put on it for me to pay, right? Without parliamentary sanction, that is mm. a blatant illegality. Mm. So I'm quoting and what he says here. That, I'm quoting what he says here. He says please. the management of BOSS thus ensured that all approvals were obtained from the board to allow them put five pesos per liter on top of all sales made by the company out of the strategic reserve petroleum program so that's how they term the strategic reserve petroleum program and according to him it was only god that was involved that's how come the other oil marketing companies are unaware of this 40 million to the chief of staff that's why i wanted to know hmm. if this is a hive of uh, of Goyle's profits. profits. No. Mm -hmm. But if it is not, yes. and it is an imposition of tax, where, apart from all the price components uh, in the uh, petroleum price build-up, as approved by Parliament, this extra five pesos mm -hmm. was imposed by the presidency, then I think that uh, they, they should bring out uh, uh, that money, if that's the justification. Because, you see, I told you about the case that I did with... Uh, Kukwating, right? Development data versus uh, TOR and uh, GMPC, right? That case, uh, maybe uh, they should go and read the judgment by Justice Bayer, right? It clearly stated that in that case that we did, the smuggling of one city on each uh, gallon of petroleum that was bought without parliamentary approval was an imposition of tax and therefore an illegality. So in that case, the court ordered that the amount of about 600 million, 650 million that had been collected based on the calculation that we did mm -hmm. uh, for the court should be put in the consolidated fund, which they, uh, I mean, uh, brazenly refused to do, right? Mm -hmm. This is a repetition of that. And Mr. Power should not do that. He should not. If there's a justification, then they were rather uh, doubling in illegality. Hmm. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Godfrey. I'm worried by bust. Hmm. Um, I think that the kind of stories as a journalist I hear about bust on a daily basis, hmm. uh, a state institution like that um, gives cause for worry. Uh, this is another one of those stories. We've had, at the moment, we are dealing with a, a bust where thousands of of tons of oil apparently evaporated. Mm -hmm. A bust that is paying millions to a company called Springfield mm -hmm. against the instructions of their lawyers. Mm -hmm. A bust that has already lost one CEO. Mm -hmm. That has, you know, and it looks like the the whole bust area is just one reckless corrupt spot. Mm -hmm. And this is another example of 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 the issues. At boss, I do not understand how uh, the office of the chief of staff mm -hmm. is able to. Op apparently, from what the explanation I've been, I've heard, mm -hmm. they have several accounts, and one of such accounts is where this mm -hmm. money was put into. Who checked it? They are saying yes, it is open to the uh, 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 auditor, auditor general, general and whatnot. Sure. But that is that is no excuse for actions like this. We need a certain level of transparency, especially with an institution like BOST. Okay. And so I expect that Yoko will do their job properly. 
regarding this matter. The special prosecutor says he cannot touch it. That's fine. But Yoko looking into this matter, I think, is well placed. And I will be following carefully the results of this investigation because when it comes to bust in particular, the past few years, the kind of stories that are coming out of bust, mm -hmm. we might we, we might need to go and sit at the gates of bust. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we might just to prevent some of the rush that is happening there. Because this morning, I simply could not fathom how oil evaporated. Mm -hmm. How does oil thousands evaporate? Later. Thousands. Mm -hmm. if, then the, the reason they are giving, official reason, the oil evaporated. How? Okay, and then you have this particular issue. So, I, I, I feel that BOSS is becoming a problem child of a state institution. Either we regulate it properly, or we make systemic changes to the structure of BOSS to prevent some of these things. We route their monies through one account or something, but we need to check BOSS because it looks like everybody who needs to misbehave just goes to bust, yeah. dumps their money in there, or diverts some oil here. And you see, there are so many avenues when it comes to bust. That is the problem. And the legal architecture, Honorable, is so complicated when it comes to dealing with institutions like bust. There is a legal justification for everything they do. But you look, you sit down and look at it and you're like, no, this is, this is simply wrong. just an avenue, another avenue for corruption. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we need to see less of bust in the newspapers. And this particular issue, we've had the explanations that have come, but we still expect an investigation to happen because it's a bit worrisome, especially the five pesos part. Where did the money go? Into the account. Who so, checks the account? Hmm. On a daily, so are we going to see a year-on-year -year report from the Auditor General on what that money was used for? Who had access to it at what point? What could have been done with it? Okay, th these are state funds. So we, we, we need a bit more seriousness with how we deal with some of these particular issues. I am not overly enthused about uh, bust this particular month at all. Bust mm. is, is, is just the stories one span bad through, headline after the other. Yeah, it, it appears almost uh, every CEO of bust seems to be, uh, or bust MD seems to be facing one challenge or another. Honorable, we'll take a final word on this and then we'll move on to our next story. Yeah, I think that... Uh, uh, the matter is already before the investigative body, that's mm. Yoko. Mm. Let's just leave it to them. Mm. Let them go through the investigations. If anybody uh, is found culpable, fine. But uh, I think I, I, I will do a follow-up with the explanation yeah. from, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Edward Baba. Mm. And if indeed it is the explanation that you have given me, mm. that it is the ordinary person who went to buy and by their oh, own wow. design yeah. I was tax five pesos. five pesos and it went into that account and please uh, probably some of us will have to go to the court for uh, mm. a pronounce uh, 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 legal pronounce, uh, uh, pronouncement on that mm. Mm -hmm. fantastic because it's, it's wrong okay. let me leave it there thank you mm. now the, the final story we're discussing today i'm reading from page 16 of the daily graphic no agreement on digital tv platform with star time that's coming from george under the government has dismissed the suggestion by the ghana independent broadcaster association that's giba that the government has signed an agreement to hand over the management of the country's national digital television transmission platform to star times of china the deputy minister of communication george under told daily graphic that star time transmission is totally separate from the national digital terrestrial television transmission they star time are not running it on the national digital television transmission he goes on to say that if star time is allowed to control uh, well this is coming from giba they are saying that if star time is allowed to control ghana's digital transmission infrastructure and satellite space in the name of digital migration ghana would have virtually submitted its broadcast space to chinese control and content i know godfrey you have yeah. a lot to say on this so <laughs> i'll let you start it and we'll move on to honorable <laughs> What is going the, on? There's a lot of, of misunderstanding in the yes. space. He, this is what happened. Help us understand what's going now, on. Now, when Honorable Harun Idrisu, mm -hmm. now minority leader, was Minister of Communication, he did a deal mm -hmm. with Star Times to facilitate the infrastructure for Ghana's digital migration. He was moved from that ministry and the deal was changed. 
mm -hmm. and handed to a Ghanaian firm called Knet mm -hmm. to continue uh, the building of the infrastructure. Now, Star Times was unhappy and went for arbitration mm -hmm. on this issue. Mm -hmm. Change of government came, and they looked at it, and the government decided that, uh, upon advice from the Attorney General, they did not have a case regarding Star Times. They were going to lose. Mm -hmm. So there was the, the, their, their next line of action was, okay, KNET has built up to a certain point. The next phase mm -hmm. of the deal will be continued by Star Times. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then once it is done, we will sit down and look at how we will set up a management company that will handle the entire infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Gibbous worry, however, comes in with government also giving tax waivers yeah. to Star Times to bring in a certain kind of equipment. Mm -hmm for a project that they are on now star times uh china as part of their interaction with the african continent has this ten thousand village project where they are providing television sets boxes solar panels as well to it's villages 10, to facilitate digital penetration and ghana's ghana is benefiting out of that particular ten thousand we are getting 300 um of that and so you put the two together and giba is very suspicious okay one we have companies like Multi TV, we have Sky, uh, Crystal TV, yes, yeah. we have Group Indum who are doing the same thing as this company is doing. And this company is a competitor. Mm -hmm. Now, all the Ghanaian firms who did this were not giving tax waivers. Mm. They paid money mm. to bring in these equipment. So how come the one who can actually afford it 10 times over mm -hmm. is getting a waiver. waivers to bring in? And what exactly is he bringing in? We want to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Secondly, they are worried by, it basically looks like Star Times has been giving free pass to penetrate. To monopolize the market. Well. You understand? Because if they have access to 300 villages, this, these are markets that GN wants. This is the same market Crystal wants. This is the same market Multi-TV wants. But by virtue of this project, they are simply just going in there. So Giba is worried by issues of acculturation, where they feel that the content is going to come from China and they have stated there are 30 channels coming in from China that will do this and then they're also very worried by the infrastructure development that uh, Star Times is doing because they are thinking that once Star Times is done they are going to one since it's their system they have in-depth knowledge of how it works their security implications mm. and they might also manage it when there are Ghanaians who can manage it and that is where the fear is but from the side of government, they are saying that, look, Star Times' job is simply to complete their infrastructure. Move us. KNET builds up to 40 channels mm -hmm. and can sustain that. Star Times can move them up to 100 plus, which is where government wants to be. They are adding solar capability. They are adding HD capability. They are building a fallback infrastructure. There's a whole lot in the KNET also say they can do that. Mm. But Star Times is the one that government has settled with based on trying to save legal costs. That is according to the argument of the government on this. Where I stand on this is that, look, there should be a better explanation mm. of what Star Times is going to do. Giba has legitimate concerns mm -hmm. because they are in the industry. And if they sit down and they see a competitor, because that is how they see Star Times. It's not just the... Uh, let's put the... Uh, how would I say the suspicion of foreign intrusion into the space aside mm -hmm. this is a competitor that mm -hmm. you are giving perhaps Subsidies. a certain kind of advantage mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. in the market how do we compete in an already difficult market content is expensive to make content is not that expensive for this guy mm -hmm. to make he has everything there we are spending millions of cds to do this so how do we compete how do we get our digital boxes out there Th these are the thoughts from Giba. So I feel there should be a, a comprehensive conversation between the NCA, for instance, the Minister of Communications, and Giba, to explain the different phases that Star Times is going to go through with regards to the 300 project and also the uh, construction of the digital migration infrastructure, mm -hmm. especially, and certain assurances given. Once it is broken down, I think that everybody will be clear on okay. what the position is. But at the moment, due to... 
the inability to communicate properly, surprisingly, mm -hmm. on this particular issue. Everybody is suspicious. And that is why Giba is saying, we are going to shout until you hear us. And government is saying, hey, we haven't done anything wrong. Star Times is simply building infrastructure. They are not managing. Hmm. Okay, so, uh, Honorable, I'll bring you in here, but let me add another angle to the story. So I did, before you go on, I just wanted to confirm. You said uh, government saying it was, they're doing this to save legal cost. Yes, because there is a case at Star the, Times. I, 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 I yes, see Star you. Times did take the, the, uh, the abrogation of okay. the contract to arbitration. Okay. And government's okay. legal, the advice that was given to government was, look, you're going to lose this on this particular issue. So, find a way. Okay. Government's solution was, since you cannot build everything, Kenet has built the first part, finish the project. Fantastic. So the story here says, Star Time won't manage DTT platform. Geba misinformed. That's coming from Anda. So um, Star Time here says, the government should stop discussions they are having with Star Times. Ghanaians are capable of doing whatever project DTT will bring to Ghana. Hmm. The future of DTT rests in the hands of Ghanaians, and we have enough technology and know-how. This was coming from the president of Gibraltar. He, he was speaking to Bernard, and now um, Mr. George Anda is also saying Gibraltar's concerns seem to be misplaced because they feel Star Times is going to manage the platform, and that it's going to Star Time that is going to be putting this. It's conditional access. It's middleware on platforms, and that is not the case. I tend to believe that Giba may have forgotten that they have provided input into the draft DTT policy document, which talks about who is going to manage the platform and who are the members oh, of boy. the board. So it, it looks like from the perspective of um, George Anda, there's a bit of misunderstanding from Giba's perspective. And from Giba's perspective, it looks like we are once again um, giving preferential treatment to yeah. foreigners who are going to come in and compete with our local businesses. Hmm. I don't profess to know the technicalities involved in these matters. Uh, but uh, my point is that um, we must build the country in such a manner that our local people would be empowered. Uh, so uh, I do not know uh, how Star Time came in. Mm -hmm. uh, he was giving some historical perspective uh, how uh, they had been contracted by uh, Honorable Harry mm -hmm. when he was uh, communications, communications minister. And then after his exit from the place, who uh, advised that the contract should be abrogated? That was um, Dr. Mani Bwama. Yeah, okay. and, and also the, the seven member communities, let me just add more, the seven uh, member board will also include locals. So um, he talked about the Ministry of Communications, Ministry of Finance, people from GBC and members from GIBA and, and, and also people from, from public, preferably somebody from the creative arts industry. So uh, he's also saying that even the board will be made up of locals. It's not going to be just Chinese coming in to run everything. Yeah, so um, he is saying that they are not going to manage it. Yeah. They are only going to build the infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. But I think all these things uh, would be laid to rest if the contract between Ghana and Star Times is made public. Mm. As yeah. simple as that. So that it doesn't become like your word against my word. Mm. Look, these are the rights and obligations to which we have submitted ourselves. So let us everybody let everybody see it. If it is made public, I don't think uh, we are going to uh, destroy this country. Mm -hmm. I believe in open policy, right? Yes. So if my uh, colleague uh, can make the contract available to Ghanaians, all this will available would uh, would put to rest. Mm. Once we get to know that, look, all the rights mm. and obligations of Star Times. And with just com with the completion of the infrastructure, okay, and that the um, subsequent uh, management of that infrastructure will be handled by, will be handled by uh, Ghanaians. I'm sure that fear would then have been dissipated. Is that not the, uh, mm. the, the, the case? Yeah. So let us see from from that point. And I think the other bit where Giba seems to have a problem. Mm -hmm. Is that why are you allowing these people to 
go and put their uh, boxes in around. the village. Okay, if 300 uh, villages are going to things, right, for, for the first time, or initially, it may be free, as we know, right? And we've had but, this issue in the past. But would it, it be free forever? Mm. Okay. Uh, so when they, 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 they now say that, okay, you know, you now have to pay, right? Uh, you realize that they have already developed the taste for it. Are they not going to change? And if they're not going to change, uh, are they going to buy from the other competitors to, to add to the channels that they have? Mm. No. So that, that, that's where the uh, others, okay, who are also competing, okay. uh, well, we'll to wrap uh, up raising, raising issues. So I think uh, they should sit down and come out with uh, the best solution uh, for all the parties involved. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we are indeed, or we're joined by Honorable Alexander Aban. He's the Honorable Member of Parliament for Goma West, and of course, the Head of Current Affairs and also uh, host of Face to Face, Godfrey Akoto. Thank you also for joining us. <laughs> now, um, um, up next. Yes, we are going to meet with Kumasi High School old students. Right, You don't want hmm. to miss that hmm. conversation. <laughs> but but, but did you go to Kumasi High? Continues. <laughs> I stayed out of their way when I was there. Why? We have quite a few messages. We shall read them shortly. And uh, of course, uh, good morning. Going to Honorable Alexander Aban, or the person doesn't write his name. And also, good morning to uh, Mr. Wombe. And um, yes, up next, Kumase. Hi. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.